All right, my friends, it is time for another edition of this series in which I tell you the best bands in every single subgenre of rock and metal so that you can argue with me in the comments and tell you that I picked the wrong bands, or you can tell me that the band that I called Metalcore is actually post-hardcore. How dare you call that Metalcore band post-hardcore? Do you know anything? I thought you called yourself the Punk Rock NBA, more like the Punk Rock GED, am I right? Ooh, you are right, and today, I'm gonna show you how little I know about anything by picking the best bands in yet another series of subgenres so that you can go argue in the comments and you can go tell me how I'm wrong and I misgenre this band and uh, that I'm a terrible person. We covered quite a few, quite a bit of ground on our first one. So if there's anything you don't see here, go watch that one. And also I wanted to mention something new that I'm doing, which is a YouTube coaching program. If you're an individual creator or you're a company, really anybody that wants to grow on YouTube, this is for you. Basically, this is a way to download everything that I've learned about YouTube over the past seven years from my brain into yours. There's a pretty common set of challenges that pretty much everybody runs into on YouTube. I've run into pretty much all of them. And with this coaching program, I can help you get past those a lot faster than I did figuring it out on my own. For example, in my opinion, the single most important thing for any channel is figuring out the right niche for your content. Like what should you focus on and how do you talk about it? For example, for me on this channel, once I found that I went from getting, you know, a couple hundred views a video to tens of thousands of views per video, literally almost overnight. You can see it right here. And also the right approach to things like title and thumbnails and how to structure your videos to keep people's attention. All that stuff that took me years to figure out on my own through trial and error. I just wanna help you speed run all of that. I am super excited about this and I'm gonna be putting a lot of time and energy into it over the course of the year. And if you wanna find out more about it, you can just hit the link in the description of this video. We'll start with the best band in one of my favorite genres of all time, which is pop punk. And uh, I feel like this is an easy one. Again, this is the best song in the entire genre, and anybody who says otherwise is high. I feel like this is a universally accepted fact. All the Small Things by Blink-182. The best song by the best band in the genre. Exactly. I don't even like Blink and I still have to agree. Exactly. It's one of those things where you can't argue with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's no competition. You know, the only thing that I could see as arguably a valid pick would be Longview or Basket Case by Green Day, I think would be, you know, arguable choices. You know, even so, I just feel like Blink is the template for pop punk, not Green Day. You know what I mean? Everyone loves Green Day and as they should because Green Day is amazing and great. I think they're one of the best bands of all time. But this is a template for the entire genre. The song still sounds great. You don't have to even like music at all. To like this you know what i mean you could play this for your aunt that doesn't even listen to music and they would know the song and they would like it and they'd be able to sing along to it and they would watch this video and laugh because it's just that good that's what i think as much as i'm sure you all love to debate me and argue with everything that i say or do i feel like this is a pretty safe opinion that's what i think we know that we have to pedantically split hairs because that's what we're here to do, right? We're here to, you know, we're here to look at this, this chart here. We're here to split hairs about the differences between technical brutal death metal and brutal technical death metal. And so therefore, we're also going to split hairs uh, between pop punk and skate punk, two very similar things. Back in the 90s, they just called all this stuff pop punk. You know, anything on Epitaph or Fat Records, you know, that snowboarders listen to, they just, they called all of it pop punk. And then over time that became known as skate punk and stuff like Blink and Sum 41 and Good Charlotte and New Found Glory became known as pop punk and the quote unquote, you know, real pop punk became known as skate punk. Now, obviously if you're around at the time, you will remember that everyone hated no effects back in the day, all the real punks did and Lagwagon, they hated all that stuff. But now everybody loves them as they should have all along. But you're right, to me, all of this is Screamo. Every song and every artist that I've mentioned in this video is Screamo, that's a fact. So um, my favorite Screamo song by my favorite Screamo band, otherwise known as skate punk, uh, would be no effects. They're the best, they're the best skate punk band. There's no question about it. No question about it. I 
Matt Mike with his nipple piercings. I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, No Effects is one of these bands that back in the day, like I said, everybody hated them, but I think, you know, all the quote unquote real punks did anyway. Um, but, you know, in time, we've realized No Effects was always great. Now, if you were to ask Fat Mike, he would tell you that they copied. Bad Religion, and RKL, um, which you know is true because they have a song called I'm a Huge Fan of Bad Religion, which is about how much they rip off Bad Religion. And you can definitely hear how much they were influenced by RKL too. But I think that... I, I think they do it better than either one of those bands. I really do. And I'm sure Mike would disagree with me, but I think No Effects did Bad Religion and RKL better than Bad Religion and RKL did it. You know, to this day, I think... Probably So Long and Thanks for All the Shoes is really, to me, it will always be the best album in this genre. You know, nobody's ever going to come along and do this sound better than they did. So I would say no effects. The Kings of Skate Punk, anybody who disagrees with me, you're kicked out of the scene. You are no longer a punk. Now, let's talk about hardcore, okay? Hardcore, you know, the little bit more aggressive version of of punk rock. I'm going to divide this up into two different kinds of hardcore. You could nerd out all day long about all the different versions and flavors of hardcore, but I'm just going to, I'm going to break it out into two versions, old school hardcore and new school hardcore. When it comes to old school hardcore, I mean, I've listened to a lot of hardcore for a very long time. Over the years, I feel pretty confident in saying that Minor Threat are the best old school hardcore band. Black Flag is better. You know, I just wrote a long video about Black Flag. I really respect Black Flag for being so experimental and doing so much weird shit, but a lot of their stuff is really hard to listen to, which was on purpose. They made a lot of music that was deliberately difficult to listen to on purpose, and I respect that, but I don't know if I would necessarily listen to it. I think Minor Threat, the strongest overall old school hardcore band. Still holds up. Not a single bad song in the Minor Threat discography. Every single song Minor Threat ever put out is a fucking 10 out of 10. If you have never heard it, go listen to the Minor Threat discography. It's all on Spotify. They put out one CD that has everything they ever did. Just listen to it front to back. Everything on it is absolutely incredible. Just really, really, really great songwriting. Very catchy. A lot of like vocal hooks, like... Just legitimately great any way you want to look at it. There's a reason why. Remember the Beastie Boys were always like very into Minor Thread. And when I was a kid, I was kind of like, I don't really get it. Like, why are they so into Minor Thread? And, you know, the older I get, the more I appreciate it, the more I realize why. Because, uh, yeah, just legitimately great any way you want to look at it. So as far as old school hardcore goes, I would pick Minor Thread. Obviously, Black Flag is up there. Chromags is up there. I mean, there's like a million great old hardcore bands millions of dead cops also great but i would pick minor threat that's my pick now how about new school hardcore this is actually a simple one for me to pick i feel like anybody who disagrees with me is a poser as always if you do not mirror my opinions about anything and everything then you're a poser and that's all there is to it to me the answer to the best new school hardcore band is very simple it is terror specifically terror during the era in which todd jones played guitar for them todd jones many people will know him for being in nails but he was also the founding guitarist of terror and in my opinion wrote all their best stuff uh, in particular one with the underdogs is the terror release that i would point to as the best i don't think anybody will ever do this style of hardcore better than terror did and i don't think anyone will write better songs in this style than todd jones todd is the goat of this shit and a great guy. He's not in this video, actually. Um, but he's a great guy. I love Todd. I know, you're surprised I didn't pick Hatebreed. Listen, I absolutely love Hatebreed, but maybe only debatably hardcore. Like, they get pretty metal. I think Hatebreed, you know, I, I don't know. It's a tough one. I absolutely love Hatebreed, obviously. One of my favorite bands of all time for sure but man these like the todd jones era terror songs are just so goddamn good it's a tough one yeah hate breeds definitely up there for me but if i had to just pick one i would go with terror that's what i would pick what a mosh part Yeah, so there we go. That's my pick. That is my pick for New School Hardcore. Now, how about progressive metal? A lot of you people think that I don't like progressive metal. You would be wrong. I talk 
about progressive metal quite a bit, and it should be pretty obvious from listening to me talk about it that I've listened to a fuckload of progressive metal for a very long time. And I actually do like it. Again, I just have... I just have very high standards for it. There's a lot of mediocre progressive metal, kind of generic progressive metal that's not actually progressive. But if I was to pick one band as the best progressive metal band of all time, it would be Periphery. The reason that I would pick Periphery is because number one, they got the riffs, which, I mean, you got to have the riffs. Progressive metal is all about the riffs, right? But what they also have is songs. Like, Periphery actually has a lot of catchy parts. Spencer's vocals, I think, are very unique for the genre. He has, like, kind of a pop sensibility, which to me is, like, pretty rare. You know, he can do screams, but he can also do, you know, almost like pop kind of vocals. And I think that's pretty cool. They can be real heavy, like this, but they can also be kind of poppy. And they're great musicians and great guys. My friend says that Spencer sounds like a Disney Channel theater kid. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, I think that's a fair way to put it, which is exactly to me why it's good. So you got the riffs, you got the vocals, you got the songs. And a lot of people will say, I mean, including Misha would probably say that they just rip off Meshuga, but I disagree with that. I think they bring a lot more to the table than Meshuga does. I mean, obviously they've copied Meshuga just like every other metal band does, but I think they bring a lot more to the table. And I think the periphery really is the template for Gent in my personal opinion. That's what I think. So in my opinion, if you were asking me, me, um, who the best progressive metal band of all time is. That's what I'm picking. I'm going with the boys in periphery. Okay. <clears throat> punk. How about punk? We're talking about real punk. Okay. Talking about punk rock. In all seriousness, you guys are going to think that I'm trolling. I'm not. There's a big difference between, you know, mall punk and real punk. Okay. Mall punk is Blink and Good Charlotte and Sum 41, all that kind of stuff. Even like Rise Against or, you know, The Offspring, any of that stuff, All that's all mall punk. And I like a lot of that stuff. I think it's cool. It's great. But it's not real punk. It just isn't. I'm sorry. It's not real punk. And when it comes to real punk, to me, it is very clear who the answer is as far as the best band of all time. And it would be Crass. Now, I'm just going to play this for you. I want you to look at these lyrics. This is from 1979. I want you to pay attention to these lyrics. Just pay attention to how incredibly fucking based these lyrics are. Just absolutely fucking devastating. These lyrics are over 40 years old, and they could have come out yesterday, and they would be just as relevant as they were the day they were written. This is White Punks on Hope by Crass. I said that we were trash. Well, the name is Crass, not Clash. They can stuff their punk credentials. You stem the tight of cash. Punk was about to ask for two years of crap. A way of saying no, we'd always said yes. The qualified factors of politics and class. Lefty match on three fighters with his big ass. Bigotry and blindness and Marxist gods. Another clever trick to keep us all in line. Incredible, right? Yeah. Remember to donate to the local nonprofit for the UK's tea shortage. I mean, to me, there is no more insightful, clever punk band ever than crass there's no question about it i mean they were calling out all the dumb dogmatic bullshit in punk basically from day one you know 1978 79 they were already highlighting all the dumb shit about punk the only other band i could think of that kind of gets close to their level is the vandals but I'm sure that the guys in the Vandals would agree with me. Just uh, when it comes to punk bands just absolutely fucking skewering the dogmatic bullshit in the punk scene, which to me is like, that's the worst thing about punk is it very quickly became just like, you know, dogmatic and conformist and crass, just absolutely untouched when it comes to calling that shit out. So to me, the punkest thing you can do is tell people that punk is stupid, <laughs> which is basically what Crass and the Vandals did. Uh, so they would be my pick for the number one real punk band of all time. Speaking of real punk, how about grunge? Is anyone else old enough to remember when all the grunge bands came out? Sadly, I am. Way back in 1992. Yeah, Alice in Chains seems to be the band now that everyone picks as the best grunge band, which is interesting to me. And I think I know why. Number one, because Alice in Chains is the most metal and nerds like metal. So I think that that's the reason why now everybody says that Alice in Chains is the best. 
is because they're all nerds. But yeah, Alice in Chains, probably the least popular of them at the time. Maybe Soundgarden? I don't know. But I think it's because Alice in Chains is the most metal. Therefore, nerds like them the best. Alice in Chains was mostly seen as like metal at the time. And I remember I met Lane Staley when I was like in sixth grade. You know, I remember when all these bands came out and uh, they were really seen as more like a, a metal band. Um, however, they've become part of grunge since then. But, you know, to me, the answer is like, obviously Nirvana. I don't see how anybody could say anything other than Nirvana to me. It's just, it's just like, that's just an insane take to me. It's just an absolutely insane smooth brain take to me to say that it's anything other than Nirvana. I mean, yeah, that's right. Nirvana, the clothing brand, like it should be obvious, right? The top three clothing brands of all time, top four in no particular order, Ramones, Nirvana, Misfits, Sublime are the four breast t-shirt brands of all time. And so I don't know how like the band ended up naming themselves after a t-shirt company, but I thought it was really cool that they did that because I always thought those t-shirts were cool. And I was like, oh, wait, some band named themselves after that. That's dope. And then I heard the band and I was like, actually, they're cool. And like the band sounds like how I thought they would from like looking at the logo. I was like, oh, I wonder like, what if that was like a band logo? I wonder what it would sound like. And it actually turns out it sounded like what I thought. So yeah, Nirvana, definitely the best grunge band of all time. Like just to think anything else, I, I just, you're a crazy person. If you, if you don't think that Nirvana is the number one grunge band, you just, I'd like you to leave right now. That's what I think. I'd like it. I think it's time for you to go home. Now, how about classic metal? Gotta say, I've never been a huge fan of classic metal because as I've talked about before, by the time I heard most of this stuff, I was already listening to suicidal tendencies and the circle jerks and the accused and Sepultura and stuff like that. So by the time I heard this stuff, I was kind of just like, eh, just sort of sounded like kind of weak and goofy to me. However, you know, some of the stuff I can get. Yeah, Ozzy. Oh, shit. I might have to. You know what? I'm going to change my pick. I was going to say Judas Priest because they're pretty catchy. But you're right. It's Ozzy. I didn't even think of that. Totally slipped my mind. You're right. It's Ozzy. Bark at the moon. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Good call. Thank you. Ozzy is overrated. Fuck no, he's not. This shit is amazing. This song is a 10 out of 10. I love the video too. Love this song. He is the goat. It's true. He's, he's the goat. No question about it. I prefer Ozzy's solo material to Black Sabbath by quite a bit, actually. I mean, Black Sabbath's cool. Never really been a huge Sabbath fan, but Ozzy, I, I think I prefer his solo stuff because it's a little bit more catchy, a little bit more accessible. Yeah, you know, Bark at the Moon, No More Tears. He's got he's got a ton of classic songs and uh, always had great musicians too. You know, Jakey e. Lee and Randy Rhodes, obviously, rest in peace. Oh, that's right. And... And the man, not only did the man invent heavy metal, but he is also responsible for, not single-handedly, but largely responsible for Mall Emo. Because remember when uh, the used were on the Osbournes? And that's like a big part of what made the used blow up back when Burt was dating Kelly Osbourne. So there you go. Ozzy Osbourne, pioneer of classic metal and of emo. There it is. Okay, and uh, last but not least, a genre that a lot of annoying people ask me about all the time. People say, hey, are you ever going to make a video about Grindcore? And I say, absolutely not. And they say, why not? And I say, because I don't want more people like you to watch my videos. <laughs> I don't want more weirdos to watch my videos. But in all seriousness, I just don't really know what I, what I would say about grindcore because uh i don't know what would i say about it no napalm death i mean yeah napalm death would be a good pick for sure i do think napalm death is a great band they probably deserve it to be honest now that i think about it it probably should be napalm death but i'm gonna go with discordance axis anyway because discordance axis to me is like i don't know i i started listening to these guys back in like 94 95 and to me to this day there's really nothing else that sounds like it and it has this sort of just like really unhinged kind of quality to it this is my favorite song flow my tears the policeman said by discordance axis <laughs> Fun fact, this is Dave Whitty from Municipal Waste on drums. Yeah, defecation's good too. If you remember my story about uh, 
fumbling the baddie back in uh, 10th grade or whatever by playing this for the cute skater girls that I was hanging out with. Rest in peace. <laughs> R.I.P. to me ever potentially touching their boobies. I fumbled the baddie badly by playing them this instead of just listening to no effects of them. So there it is. Episode number two of the greatest bands of all time in every subgenre. Join us next time for volume three. In the meantime, please go in the comments and tell me how wrong I am about everything and uh, why you're so disappointed with me for misgenreing your favorite band. Every song and every artist that I've mentioned in this video is Screamo. That's a fact.